The end quarter is actually the, the reverse of D quarter. If you remember in D quarter, I just go back quickly. If you have, for example, a two by four D quarter, a two by four will look so, something like this. It has two inputs, a two by four, and it has four outputs. You have a chip enable here, EN for chip enable. You have A and B for input, and you have output zero, output one, output two, output three. If you remember the truth table for this, It looks like this. If the enable is on, in this picture I need a one to be on, then that chip is active, which means I can use it. And it depends on the value of A and B. A and B will decide what output zero should look like. Output one. output 2 and output 3. And if you have 0, 0, that says this pin is going to be high and the rest of them going to be low. Oh, yes. Um, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. If it's zero, 01, only pin 1 is going to be on and the rest will be low. If it's 1, 0, that's 2. Pin 2 is on, 3 is, and the rest of them are off. If you got 1, 1, that's a 3. These guys are off and this one is on. If your chip enable is 0 here, it doesn't matter what these are your output's going to be zero. None of them will be on, the way this chip works. That's what that, this decoder operates. So if you want it to work, make sure this is high. If you make it zero, it's off and nothing happens. The fact I don't have bubbles here, bubble means one of them will be zero. That means only one of them will be high. Now the encoder is the, the reverse of decoder. So let me take a four by two encoder there. It has four inputs. And two output has a chip enable. This is four by two encoder. This is four by two decoder. So you have four inputs, but the way the inputs work, I have four inputs, so here we go. And two outputs. 
If your chip enable is one, then the chip is on. And let me call the inputs, input zero, input one, input two, input three. You have two outputs, we'll call them A and B. The way the encoder works, only one of these inputs can be on at any given time. So if it's 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. So it's the reverse of the decoder. When input zero is on, zero, so what's the binary equivalent of zero? That's zero, zero. You get zero, zero out of this. It's reverse, it's backward. When input one is on, you get a zero, one out of A and B. When input two is one, you get one, zero. When three is on, you get one, one. So it's completely opposite to the decoder. And if the enable is zero, forget it, nothing is going to happen. This is off. Doesn't matter what these are, you're not getting anything. So you get like zero, zero out of it. Doesn't do anything. The chip is completely shut off. Not power, it's locked, not even in the circuit, it's not even plugged in. You can't have two of them on there. The book gives us actually what uh, a three, uh, it looks like here an uh, 8 by 3 decoder. When pen 0, you get a 0. When it's 1, you get a 1. When it's 2. The way this particular chip there says, as long as pen 2 is 1, I don't care if these guys 0 or not. The rest of them have to be zeros. So if pen 1 is 1, they're all zeros, you get a 0. If pen 1 is 1 and the rest of them 0 except the first one, I don't care if it's 0 or 1, you get a 1. So if two, so if you look at them where the two is, that's three, that's four, that's five, that's six, that's seven. <coughs> so it's the reverse of, you know, the decoder. It's not really commonly used there. Uh, one place I can think you can use them, like if you're designing, if you have a calculator, and you can take these inputs, so when people push, for example, you want to design some controller, with that when you push a one, you want to generate zero, 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 one, right? So you have these inputs at under each one of these buttons there. So when you actually <coughs> press that button there, you make contact with it. Once you make contact, there's current going through it, and that becomes a high voltage. But that means you can't touch two buttons at the same time on. So if you hit the one, you want to make sure you get zero, 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 one. If you hit the five, you want zero, one, zero, one. So you can have these inputs attached under this, just sitting there. And what it looks like, if you're looking at your calculator, like a keyboard there, this is the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's the nine, for example. So you can have these go into an encoder there. Since I got nine, I need more than eight. There's 10 of them here, right? So this will be what? 16 by four encoder there. And what you get a picture is actually there's a wire from pen zero here. 
it's coming and sitting under this button there. So when you press that zero, what are you making? You're making contact, you're allowing the current to come through. For example, this might be five volts here. And picture this like a, under each one of these. It's not making contact. But when you press that button there, what's gonna happen? This wire is gonna touch this wire, is gonna make this what? One. And when pen zero is on, what are you gonna get out of this? Don't you get zero, 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 zero? And if you press pen three here, it's attached to I3. When you press this button there, now there's current going through that, that means this is high, pen three is high. When you press that, you should get what? Zero, zero, one, one. So the, this can actually give you the code there. It's like, it works like a switch there. Push this, push this. So under each one of these, this will be going to four, this going to five, this going to eight, this going to nine. Again, if you press that button, you make contact between this, that's a nine, that's one, zero, zero, one. And what about the other pens? You use zero through nine. What about 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15? Well, I'm not using them, right? So what you could do in that case, attach them to ground. So instead of attach them to five volts, you're gonna what? The other pens I'm using here, the 10, the 11, the 12, the 13, the 14, and the 15. If I don't need them, I can ground them all. That guarantees what? These will never be on. So I never have to deal with them. So if you're looking for like a controller where if you push the zero, you want to create that code, the binary code for zero, the one, the two, the three, the four, encoder will be a good place for it. Or another place I'm thinking about, you know, my mind here. You can set up a code there where, you know, a soda machine, when you put change in it, well, the, if you look at the old-fashioned ones, they look like this. The dimes will go down this way. That's the dimes. The nickels will be bigger, the hole. And the quarters will be bigger. So when you put the money, the money comes down. If it's a dime, it's gonna fall through this. Well, what you can do, you can set up a little lever there. And as the dime drops, what's gonna do? It's gonna push that lever, it's gonna make contact there. And now this becomes a high voltage. So you can have a four by two decoder. I mean, uh, yep, four by two. And you can attach this to this one. So now you know you got a five cents or 10 cents for this. And this one, you know you get the five cents. And this one, you know you get the quarter, attach it right there. So you can set up a design where if this is high, the code is zero, zero, and my design, zero, zero means I got a dime, or I got a nickel. Zero, one, I got what? I got a dime. One, zero, I got a quarter. If you're using a full dollar, if you're still having that old-fashioned dollar bill there, the, not the paper one. So this means we got a dollar here. So as people drop in money, we know actually what they're putting there. One of these guys is going to be lit because you're making contact with it and you're making the power be one, one of them. You can't have two of them because even if you put the money, you can't put the money fast enough to drop at the same time. You got to drop the first one, it's going to roll. While it's rolling, you put in the second one. So boom, this is on, boom, that's on. And usually you wanna have, if, you, if the design is like this, you wanna have a little spring to bounce it back so the weight of that dime pushes it back to close it. You can't put a heavy string there, I mean a spring there. If you put a heavy spring there, then that thing will never close. But you wanna bounce back to open it for the next one to come down. Once it clears it, it goes down, it goes back to this. The dollar comes in, it pushes on it. Oh, I got five cents. I got 25 cents. I got 10 cents. Well, that used to be the old design of the machines. Well, guess what? People became smart. They went, they got a wheelbarrow. I mean, uh, one of those drum, the big barrel, like oil barrel. And they start making shapes the size of money. They drop in the mint. 
they drop like quarters. The weight pushes down. So now they don't use that. You can't even use Canadian money. Now the machine will kick you off. So no, that's not it. They'll drop it out. Same shape, the same size. Now they measure the resistance of them. For US money versus Canadians, different. It's too complicated. There's a lot of people cheating, so to make sure they don't cheat, you know, we can check for that. I used to go to Chuck E. Cheese, go to all these games, you know, for the kids' tokens. If I'm not using them, I'll just drop them in. Well, you can't drop them in. So that's a place where the encoder might be used. Not much about encoder. The, the bigger one is the multiplexers and demultiplexers. multiplexers.